Now, it wouldn't be an Inside Devil show if we didn't let the main man himself talk no, no. sports. Alex Crook. Yeah, Crook. He's got to have oh, a say, no. mate. I'm he's sorry. Got, even when he's I, not here. Even, he's even when he's not here, mate, and Honestly, he's been mate. waiting for this. He was dressed up in a suit the other day when, uh, yeah, when Ten Hag got sacked, so he's been ready. Um, we've got to let Crookie have his say. I've spent quite a bit of time over the last uh, 24 hours since it became clear Ruben Amarine would be United's top target to succeed Ten Hag working out what type of guy he is, what type of manager he is, what system he likes to play. And the, the message is clear, actually, from everybody who's followed his career progression. He's pretty wedded to a 3-4-3 system, and I don't think he's going to deviate from that. Certainly, that was part of the conversations that you have with West Ham United in the summer. How does this United squad fit into that model? Well, I think it could work, actually. Uh, I think both Masrawi on one side and Dallow on the other are quite suited and have the skill set to be deployed as wing-backs, it would mean a back three, of course, with De Ligt and Martinez, you would imagine, uh, staple diets to that, and maybe Maguire when he's fit, coming in as the third-choice central defender. Ugarte, I'd imagine, uh, obviously a player who played at Sporting Lisbon, so Amarine knows him well. He'll be the deepest lying in midfield with Bruno Fernandes, I'd imagine, given a slightly freer role uh, in that number 10 position. And in terms of front three, it's quite exciting, isn't it? You probably have Hoyland through the middle, Marcus Rashford on one side and then Ganacho on the other with Ahmad waiting in the wing. So I think the squad is suited to that style of play. And I think the other attraction from Manchester United when it comes to Amarin is that he's someone who likes to be at clubs for the long haul. He's a builder. And I think United are looking for that Sir Alex Ferguson type appointment who can conjure up another dynasty. Obviously, it's going to be difficult to match what Fergie did. And in terms of his personality as well, I'm told he's a very charismatic guy. He's a very confident guy. And he has that aura to fit in and really belong as leader of one of the world's great football clubs. And potentially, personality-wise, that was where Eric Ten Hag was lacking, in my opinion. Well, quickly, uh, first, say? first of all, he wasn't wearing a tux. Then, I know. Was he? <laughs> he's changed. He's gone from being a tux <laughs> one day to wearing tracksuit top another day. He's, he's a man of many talents, mate. He's versatile. He can he's pull a off a man of look. many things for sure. <laughs> not talents. Though. I not love talents. I went on holiday with him, of course. Oh God, what was that like? Face in, in Tenerife. He, all I'll say is he was MVP. <laughs> and I can say the not same thing. Not always for the right reason. Because I've just but... come back from Istanbul with, with Crooked and I've got the same assessment. So oh, at least he's very consistent. kind of him. No, I love Crooked. Um, no. He's made his case there. You know, he's excited. You know, he's, yeah. he's done a little bit of digging into so how he you. plays. Yeah, I'm excited as well. Um, how are you seeing it, Scott? How do you understand Ruben Amarim to be? You know, some of the news that you're hearing, what you know of him already. Yeah. Should United fans be excited? Yeah. Look, I, I think... Yes, is the, is the answer. I mean, I remember after the, the FA Cup final, I was in a talk sports studios with Natalie Sawyer and, and the question came up, what should happen now? And I said, I, st I think it should be thanks, but your time is finished. There was a lot of United fans ringing in at that particular time saying, no, we've got to give them a, a chance. And I think United fans for, for a long, long time now, I've seen the culture not how it used to be. I played against Keane, Marked Beckham, you know, uh, Giggs, Skulls, Sheringham, Cole, uh, amazing. I played with and against Rio as well. Th that side, obviously, it's a million miles away now, but that still should be what you're trying to aim for. And the biggest thing, first of all, is try and create a culture. And I think for too long, United haven't had the right culture. I think Ten Hag wanted to try and create that, but for two and a half years in or two and a bit years in, not seen any kind of identity at all. So I understand where the fans are coming from. Like they've had enough of this, not just not winning trophies, but seemingly a million miles away from the standards that were set for, for 20 years under Sir Alex Ferguson. The bottom line is, I think it's always a gamble bringing someone in to be the manager of Manchester United. The Premier League is a different animal and Manchester United is a different animal to most clubs in the Premier League. Biggest club in the country, one of the very biggest in the world. But all you can say is, what do we know? We know that Ruben Amarin is absolutely bossing it in, in Portugal. It's two seasons. Yeah, he's the king of where he's at now. It's two seasons in three winning the title. That looks like it's nine wins out of nine in the league already. Scored 30 goals, conceded two in nine games. Yeah, that's so incredible. So the balance of not conceding, scoring lots of goals. Now, people turn around and say, OK, well, that's the Portuguese league. Well, actually, he's doing pretty well in Europe as well. And he has been, and he's learning all the time. He's still young. Um, we heard from Tom in terms of the personality that he is. And he's right. Trust me, I've been in Portugal, the Portuguese media. It may not be the, 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 the spotlight globally of the Premier League, but nationally, 
It's they big. can go after you. Don't yeah. worry about that. And they can ask certain questions. And the way he handles it, I think, is brilliant. But again, going to United, this is a different animal. What do we know? We know that he looks as if he's going to be comfortable. We don't know 100% until he's in that situation. Off the field, I think he'll be OK. But flex is always about winning games. It is. That, that, that's what it's always yeah. about. Yeah. And so if he can somehow, if it'd be interesting to see whether he goes straight into this 4 3 4 3 formation or 3 4 2 1 and who he plays, who he picks with his first 11. Uh, and when he takes over, of course, we don't know exactly when it's, mm. that's going to be. But I think the bottom line is you've got someone who's like the next generation uh, of a top class manager. Mm. It's just. United is the Titanic yeah. and you've got to try and turn it <laughs> to around. Turn it around we'll have to wait and see whether It's a around. big task. Yeah, I mean, in the lead up, I was very understanding that Ten Hag was staring down the barrel for a while now. I was, I was basically late there. You know, when you said in the summer, I was one of those Man United fans who would have probably been calling up Talk Sports yeah. saying, Scott, he doesn't know what he's talking about. <laughs> We've just won the FA Cup. Yeah. Sit down. Against City. I, you know, and I was outside at Wembley and I, you know, I was, I was ruled by emotion. I hold my hands up with that. And I was like, I just felt that he deserved the chance to, to right the wrongs by getting this trophy in this manner against this team. Let's have a look at you next season. And then if it doesn't go right, yeah. see you later, which is essentially what's happened. But in hindsight, I realised very quickly this season that actually that was wrong. They should have done a Louis van Gaal vibe and said, listen, thank you for the FA Cup. We're going to go in a different direction. Um, my thing is this. I've been in such pain and sorrow and anger and looking for blame and ups and downs and more downs than ups, right? I, when we was going to get Eric Ten Hag, right, I was all in, Scott. I'm the, I've seen his Champions League runs. He's gone to Chelsea and played them off the park. He's gone to the Bernabeu. Mm. That was just a crazy game against Spurs. In the home game, he absolutely destroyed them. And when they got them back to Amsterdam, it was just one of those games. He would have won that Champions League. His football, he was doing that with Tadic, with Van der Beek, with De Ligt, with Sant. Look at that. What's he going to do with better players? And then we went to um, Ajax to do some content. It was our second to last game of the season. I want to go see for myself. Um, they played their home game, which made them win the league. And I was interviewing okay. fans. There was flares going off. I was in it, Scott, yeah. and I'm going, All in. we've got it. Yeah. He's young, he's up and coming. You know, Bayern Munich were looking at this guy. It, similar vibes I to know like, where you're going do you know what I mean? Now, yeah. And then you yeah. get to the Premier League. And like you said, it's a different animal. Mm. So on one hand, I'm like, I have kind of been here before. And I just want to, as a, I'm doing a lot of character building. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I don't want to make, I don't want to have the sins of the past, right? So I was all, I was all in for Ten Hag, and now I'm like, right, I'm excited. I just spoke yeah. to Tom, and I could feel myself getting giddy again, right? right. But I'm like, okay, great, three, four, three, and all that, mate. When you go to Bournemouth, mate, yeah, twelve thousand at the Vitality, you might walk in there, and go, what's this? He's, no, 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 my friend. You can get a baptism of fire at any ground in this Premier League, including your own. And I just, I just don't want to get sucked in. But at the same time, I'm like, I have to look forward. We have to look forward as Man United fans. So That's football, though. I mean, we all want to get sucked in, don't we? We all want to. Yeah, that's that, what it's that's, about. That's the love, what it's about, the, yeah. the highs and the lows. But but maybe you'll just be that little bit, hold yourself back a little yeah. bit, which might not be a bad thing. Yeah. You know, because you're not actually wanting it now. No, I want to and judge him when I, see, when I see him in the stadium, see the team week by week and go, I can see that. I've just mentioned the that. Titanic. It's going to take time. Yes. It is, honestly. It's going to take time yeah. it, for, for people to... Whoever was going to come in, people... There's going to be a certain section of the media and the fans will say, right, straight away, we've got, we've got to absolutely bang this. Well, no, it doesn't work like that. We've seen it over the last decade or so. Mm. Um, but I think the way I know he deals with the press... That's a big I, thing, I isn't think it? that's a big plus. Because Ten Hag didn't have that, no. did he? he didn't, and that's especially the, when it starts going wrong. Yeah, and I listen to people saying that managers have to have charisma. They, they don't. First of all, for me, they just have to have that sort of with their manager and the players, good relationship where you can get the best out of the players and win games. Win games, that's the everything thing. else comes about. It's fine. Yeah. But when things are not going well, that's when you need your personality to come in. Where Ten Hag didn't have one. Jose Mourinho certainly did. Um, and Ruben Amarin, I think, has that likability character. And he just mentioned there, Tom, and he's absolutely right. I've spoken to people over there and what I know of him even the silliest of questions, he'll kind of like smile and answer it in a nice way. But United is United. And <laughs> it's, a it, different you know, beast. it's a different beast. And so we're going to have to wait and see if he turns it around pretty quickly. It can almost roll be snowball before you know it. If it doesn't, fans just need to be patient. But I genuinely think the Manchester United fans just are willing to be patient. 
and give him a little bit of time in the way they did with Ten Hag. Yeah. Two and a bit years clearly wasn't going to happen. And it's more than enough this to show that you can do something. Absolutely.